Hey, so welcome to video 12. Um, in this video, I wanted to share a thing that I found this morning, actually. Um, a really easy way of creating masks in Substance Painter and exporting them uh, in a nice channel-packed way. And not in a way that disrupts your regular painting. You can do this uh, all in the same file. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Uh, this is handy for when you want to uh, mask off part of a prop to multiply a color against it, you know, to, to allow LDs to customize it. Or you want to you mask off areas that uh, where the emissive lights go or or danger striping or whatever it's going to be, right? Uh, this has already uh, helped me out on a prop, so uh, I felt it was worth sharing. Yeah, and I forgot to mention, uh, going forward, I'm going to start to add little segments to the end of these videos. So it's like they'll be the main uh, topic we're going to talk about, uh, and then I'll add a segment that'll talk about a Moto plugin or a script that I really like or something you, uh, that I find useful. Uh, that stuff's mostly going to be for Moto users, and uh, I'm not sure they really warrant like a whole video on their own. But in terms of just being something uh, cool to tell you about, you know, I think it's worth it. So be on the lookout for those, and we'll start with this video. Hey, okay, so here we are in Substance Painter. Now. Um, the heart of this trick lies in in adding the custom channels to your document. So if you're familiar with Substance Painter, um, you know when you uh, create a new project, uh, it gives you a bunch of standard channels. You can see them over here, right? So uh, what we have to do is add some custom ones. So we'll add two custom ones just to show this off. Now when you open up the plus thing, you get all these channels and then at the bottom you get these user channels. These are wide open to be whatever you want them to be. So if I add user zero, and I'll also add user one. Um, and now I got these custom channels in here. And if I throw in, well, uh, let me show you. So uh, if I flip through the channels using the C key, you know, my base color, my height, all the standard ones are here, but then uh, user zero shows up. I, I mean, this is the only way you can actually view these channels because they aren't part of the standard shader, right? So I can put all of my masking information in here for whatever I want to use it for. And uh, it'll only concern itself uh, when it goes to export this. And we'll see that in a second. <coughs> Excuse me. So right up front, um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add a fill layer and I'm going to turn off all the other channels except for user zero. So user zero is getting filled with white right now which is not entirely what I want. So what I'm going to do is add a black mask to this and then rope off a couple of uh, uh, pieces of this mesh and just like uh, uh, those two were on uh, user zero's mask. Okay, fine. So with that done, I'm going to hit C again and go to user one. Now in user one, we're going to add another fill layer turn off all the channels except for user one. And again, we're going to add a black mask because I don't want you know, everything on this mask. But say that user one was going to be some sort of a mask where I just have some scribble uh, graffiti, whatever. This is just for demonstration, you know, whatever it's going to be. So that, uh, that defines what goes on mask or uh, user one's channel. Okay, so flipping back to the main thing, you can see that this hasn't affected uh, a damn thing when it comes to uh, the actual mesh or the way it displays in the viewport. Yeah, but once again, cycling around with the C key, there's my there's my user zero custom mask and there's my user one custom mask. And we'll see how to export these in a second. Okay. So to export this stuff is actually very simple. Uh, if you're familiar with Substance Painter, again, um, you know that you can channel pack stuff really nicely. So if I go in the export dialog and I pick my standard export spec, uh, I'm gonna add a new line down here just to demonstrate this to you. So I say, hey, let's make a mask test uh, texture that'll get exported from here. And it's got the separate RGB channels. So what I do is I simply grab uh, user zero from the input maps and drop it on there and say, you know, 
yeah that's a gray channel and then grab user one and drop it on the green and say yeah that's gray and user two as well this i typically have them all you know and really that's it now when it exports it's going to export a texture that has you know user one packed in the r channel user one sorry user zero packed in the r channel user one packed in the green user two packed in the blue and then once I'm inside of my game engine, I can use those masks for whatever I want to use them for. Um, I'll show you the resulting export here in a second. And finally, here we are in Photoshop. And this is the texture that I generated from Substance Painter. And you probably, you know, uh, recognize what's going on already. So if I turn off, I turned off blue already. If I turn off the green channel, uh, there's those rigid parts that I I drew the lasso around. Uh, they're all masked off in the red channel. If I turn on green, you can see my scribble graffiti mask is in there as well. And so it's all channel packed together. And if you're familiar with Unreal and how you can, you know, use individual channels to mask off things, you'll quickly realize how, how powerful that is. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you find it useful. Thank you. Okay, so the first plugin we're going to look at is called Bling. And what Bling simply does is Bling applies a matcap shader to the whole scene. Now this is something that's built into Modo and has been for a couple of versions. But you know, the way you have to do it is you go to the shader tree, you add a matcap material, you, uh, you go browsing for the matcap that you want to use, pull it in and all that, and it's just a bit of a pain. And Bling just streamlines all that and puts a button up on the toolbar. Now the main purpose behind this is, to, well in my mind anyway, uh, Mac caps are really good for like uh, hard surface stuff because uh, you can see errors and uh, uh, continuity problems in the surface and things like that. Now again, Moto has a built-in solution for this. They have their reflection shader, which works, but there's something with my brain <laughs> Uh, where I like stuff to look pretty uh, while I'm working on it. And this to me doesn't look all that great. Or at the very least, uh, it's very limiting because it's this or nothing. So uh, if I use Bling and just pull this down and uh, Bling has a folder basically uh, where you can throw all, uh, all of your matte cap textures in there and uh, they'll appear on this dropdown. And if you're not familiar with a, uh, if you're not familiar with what a matte cap texture is, uh, just think back to all the ZBrush videos that you've watched. Um, the way that uh, the ZBrush materials that pop up and you apply to your mesh, you know, while you're spinning it around, uh, those are matte caps. And this list here is just one that I've cultivated from, you know, uh, bouncing around the internet and finding things uh, over the years. And uh, Bling comes with a whole bunch of them, but you know, this is the list that I like. So anyway, let's throw on this gray metal. Now you can see, you know, this looks a lot prettier uh, when compared to that reflection shader. And it's serving the same purpose. It's, it's really uh, showing off the surface continuities. It's showing me you know, errors and pinches. Like there's some stuff here, you know, but whatever. Don't judge. And uh, yeah, you can just pick anything off of here. Uh, Mac caps are pretty versatile. You can find them for all kinds of surfaces, you know, whether they're shiny yellow plastic or they're metal or, you know, whatever you're going to have them end up being. Um, this is one that I typically work in, uh, the gray metallic. I just like the look of that. And when something looks cool in the viewport, that inspires me to work on it more. And it's just kind of a, you know, a thing that works for me. So that's bling. Uh, I find it super useful.